Magandang na kumagaw ko sa inyong lahat. Uh, Nagkaganap naman ako, marami pumunta. Kasi ngayon, PPS, so Philippine Pediatric Society. So, may presentation ba dito? Ay, isa lang. Siyempre na sabi ko pa. So, nag-outset requirement kasi ngayon sa PPS na mag-scan in, scan out, so haba-haba ng pina para hindi ka dilitas. Okay. So, um, again, my talk this morning is vaccination through the agent. And I was informed that most of the people will probably not be in this mission. So, I, I made it so that it's actually uh, for all age groups. Um, so, this is the outline of my talk. Of course, I will discuss the vaccines and their potential. Who have heard of the decade of vaccines, 2011 to 2020? Kasi 2015 na, na-trading na siya eh. Pero wala yan ang nakakaya. <laughs> <laughs> Pero meron naman, decade of vaccines, 2011 to 2020. So I will introduce that concept to you and the update on the global vaccine action plan. And then I will discuss relatively newer vaccines that have been available in the market but it seems that nobody is taking it up. And that is the horizon then we might see. So, uh, just a brief quiz. Okay, can you see a piece at the back? Okay, this is Edward Jenner. Okay, familiar po ba? Edward Jenner. Okay, so I'm through. I developed this vaccine after serving milk grains in the late 1700s and tested it on a young boy, which disease did I create a vaccine against? Any takers? Okay, so choices. Small pack. B cells, polio, A, B, C, uh, D, yellow fever, C, uh, E, uh, diphtheria, and F, rabies. I'm not supposed to. Yes, small pack. Galing, galing, galing. Thank you, Pauline. Tama, <laughs> small pack. Okay, so in the 1700s, and although Edward Jenner is the one who's said to have discovered variolation, Actually, in the 1300s, the Chinese scientists have already been using some form of smallpox vaccine. And with the use of the vaccine, smallpox has been eradicated in 1979. And that was a huge achievement. Vaccines prevent more than 2.5 million child deaths a year, and available vaccines could prevent an additional 2 million deaths a year among children under 5 years old. We've heard before, in the, in, in the third of the century, that vaccines are the most significant public health improvement. But actually it's also one of the ten most cost-effective solutions to major global challenges. And then you'll see number four, expanded immunization coverage for children. This is an um, alphabetical list, if you may say, of all the vaccines, preventable diseases. So A to Y, 725. And that's the yellow fever. So marami marami na. Pero hindi lahat yan na nagdari sa Pilipinas or available in the Philippines. I will be discussing some of them. I will discuss the current situation in the Philippines as well. So briefly, what is the decade of vaccines? The vision is a world in which all individuals and communities enjoy lives free from vaccine-preventable diseases. And the mission is really to extend by 2020 and beyond the full benefit of immunization to all people, regardless of where they are born, who they are, and where they live. Because what we have been seeing is that there is inequity when it comes to um, access to vaccination and vaccines. So what the Global Vaccine Action Plan really wants to do is to make sure that all vaccines are available to everyone, regardless of where they are and who they are. So this, this plan defines collectively what the immunization community wants to achieve over the next decade. So, naka five years na ho ngayon. Ano ba yung mga goal ng vaccine action plan? Number one, achieve a world free of polyomyelitis. So, alam niyo ba na mag eradication na, plan for eradication. One step closer towards eradication ang polio. Okay, so dapat nalalaman natin lahat yan din ang mga, mga nasa healthcare profession. Number two, meet global and regional elimination targets. Number three, meet vaccination coverage targets in every region, country, and community. Number four, develop and introduce new and improved vaccines and technologies. And number five, we exceed the Millennium Development Goal number four target for reducing child mortality. Kasi nga 2015 na, di ba yung NPG, NPG na yan, 
2015 lang yan. O, so, dapat lalo ko sa tayo ng 2015. Ito yung mga targets. Mamaya, sasabihin ko kung nasa ng Pilipinas. DDP3. So, ang target ng Global Vaccine Action Plan is actually a national vaccination coverage of 90% in all countries by 2015 with no district coverage less than 80%. Okay. Second, introduction of underutilized vaccines. Third, polio. Dapat wala ng bagong wild-type cases ng 2014. Yun yung plan ng 2011. Maturn na yung natal tetanus global elimination na rin by end of 2015. So that's this year. And he saw elimination from three double HO regions kasama na sa Pilipinas by the end of 2015. Yan yung plano ha. And Rubella, elimination from one double HO region by the end of 2015. That's not the Philippines. Okay. Philippine situation. Global target is 90% national coverage for vaccines for this area for vaccines and tetanus. And, and th this was a publication that I was able to access in the fact to the data from 2014. And they said that the Philippines has achieved 94% DPP coverage, DPP free coverage. Although I think that there are still some areas that have really low coverage. And I'm not sure how many I know this information. But that is actually the official report. Second, polio eradication. We've been polio free since 2000. Okay. But our, but there are problems. We are considered at high risk for wildlife polio importation. Why? Because our immunization coverage for polio is still low, and you really need to attain high coverage so that you will be able to interrupt the transmission of wildlife polio. Number two, our so disease surveillance, your acute massive paralysis surveillance for polio, is really not good. So how can we know whether there's polio in one part, in one district in the Philippines if the power surveillance is not good? Okay, and then third, our population is very, very mobile. We have a lot of OFWs, 10% of our population is said to be abroad. And so there will be a lot of coming in and coming out of the Philippines. So we get there is a very high risk of importation. Pero nung nagtatrabaho sa Algeria, pinagaman mo, eh marami doon. Okay, now, there is a target to eliminate maternal and alienatal tetanus. But this means the target. Recently, there have been, there has been this assessment, and I'm hoping that the assessment will be positive so that we will be declared a neonatal tetanus free or eliminated. We are one of the countries that is considered near elimination. Okay, now, for myself, Kino bang nagkaroon ng tiktas recently? Kasi yung staff kami nagkaroon ng tiktas recently. Ano na siya, adult. So, hindi pa rin natin masasabi ang free and higher from ito because there were outbreaks in 2013. And the target is really not to have measles in the whole Western Pacific region by the end of 2015, but there were outbreaks in 2013. Okay, so we, we, we missed it. And again, the last is the introduction of underutilized vaccines. Okay, so nung mag-graduate kami, anong lang yung pahol ang alam namin sa EPI? O, ayan o. ECG, ayun na sakit pala. Listeria, portasis, tetanus, polio, and family cells. Okay? Noong 1991, fast track to 2015, ang dami na. Ito yung mga dapat na nabibigay sa health center, ma. Pero hindi sa lahat ng health center yung nabibigay. Dapat, pagkapanganak ng baby, meron ng BCG. Okay, that's for tuberculosis. And then, we have to be hepatitis B at birth. Para makatch mo, the Philippines is considered to be one of the uh, countries with a very high uh, prevalence of HDS antigen seropositivity. Okay. The last that I have uh, seen the estimate was around 9%. Six weeks of age, pentabated na. Pero, hope sa portasi ka. So, this year yung portasi is tetanus, FB, at makahit. Okay, 6 and 14. Meron pa rin tayong oral polio vaccine. So, ibang districts, in some of the districts, RP stands for rotavirus vaccine, and BCB stands for pneumococcal conjugate vaccine. So, we are currently conducting the rotavirus vaccine effectiveness study in Arcusa del Sur. There are only two regions in the Philippines with rotavirus 
such things being defined. In Canada, as a part of the John Alvarez. And then, Forty weeks in line also with the polio elimination, there is a plan to introduce uh, injectable polio vaccine for 40 weeks. And nine months measles, and then 12 to 15 months measles recently introduced the MMRs. Okay, and then also yesterday, um, the DOH uh, adolescent program manager said that they're going to start introducing TP, okay, so that's tetanus and diphtheria. Um, soy and results and regular vaccines for 13 year olds. Okay, this is the plan. So, yun yung mga bakuna ho na regularly nagagamit ng sa health center dapat. Uh, pero siyempre, medyo may kulang-kulang. So, meron ibang areas na meron, meron ibang areas na wala. So, we have actually um, introduced a lot in the past uh, five years I'm not sure if that's because uh, it, where the funds are coming from, but the Philippines economy is getting better, and health is actually becoming a priority for our politicians, and I hope that this will continue. Now, the low money goes because there are about 25 vaccines in the mind. Okay, tapos eh, alam yun, less than, um, less than 12 actually yung nagagamit sa Pilipinas. So it's less than 12 antigens. So I'd like to discuss some of the vaccines that are available um, in the Philippines but not really being used extensively in the public health setting or even in the private setting. So the first is Japanese encephalitis vaccine. So um, sinasabi ko nga kahapon kung nag-lecture ako, sabi ko, sino sa inyo nasasabing Japanese B encephalitis? Dati kasi yun ang aming, yun ang letro sa anon eh, Japanese B encephalitis. Kaya huli na ako na yung B. So you have to say Japanese encephalitis na ang drop the B, okay? And why was it B? Because there were two types of baby viruses. Baby virus A, baby virus B. JE is considered baby virus B. Okay, but it's still okay. But to be more, to go with the times, you have to say JE instead of JE, drop B. Okay. It's caused by a mosquito, now by a flavor virus that is carried by a mosquito, your cutesing mosquitoes, but in some it's also carried by anophilies and aphilies mosquitoes. So where is the Philippines located? The Philippines is located centrally, it's right there in the middle, it's highlighted in red. It's considered that Japanese encephalitis is endemic. And most of the countries in the region, Japan, Korea, China, uh, Vietnam have some form of immunization program for Japanese encephalitis. Japan and Korea have a lot of that. Um, the Korea they just started. Why is JE important? Number one, the case fatality rate is 20 to 30 percent. So if it's a one in five or one in up to one in three, na magkaroon na ng Japanese encephalitis, ng symptomatic Japanese encephalitis, ay maaari ng mga tao. Okay? And for those who survive, 30 to 50 percent would have some form of neuropsychological spreading, so they would not be normal. Symptomatic disease occurs in 1 in 250 to 500 affected individuals. Okay? So you have to remember, not everybody becomes uh, symptomatic. So, we analyzed, um, I'm just showing you this um, slide, which shows the recent surveillance data from January 2011 to March 2014. And yung mga um, each color, that those are the areas that are cons that have a suspected JE. Okay, so it's called clinical definition, acute, men menige, acute encephalitis syndrome clinical definition based on the WHO definition. And the red ones are each red dot is a clinical case. We have difficulty actually inviting um, patients or or doctors actually to know if um, marami po ba dito naka, nasa government service ngayon? Kung kayo po ay nagtatrabaho sa isang POH within hospital, maaari po bang alamin ninyo kung kayo hospital ay sentinel site for acute encephalitis syndrome surveillance? 
And you can actually refer cases um, to the surveillance system, and then the, the testing of the specimens will be free as long as you fill up your form, surveillance form. And there's actually a laboratory network that is being um, that you can send your specimens to our IPM, but you need to get the form. You have to find out who the persons are involved. And what do you see? You see that J cases are all over the Philippines. Because you know, no, no, upon a good research no, several years ago, uh, more than actually almost 10 years ago when I started looking into JE, I realized there's not a lot of data on Japanese encephalitis in the Philippines. And it's only like, ang lumang-lumang nga yung mga data pa ng Amerikano, yun pa yung nakikita ko, wala yung recent. So, so, kundi na lang, meron ang surveillance. At saka nakita natin na, dito mo kahit sa Metro Manila, meron mong JE, yung Japanese encephalitis. Hindi natin alam kung yan ay na-transport lang sa Metro Manila or sila ay actually yung mga nag-travel pabunda doon in the past two weeks tapos na kasi. Okay, why is it also important? There's no specific antiviral treatment. So clinical care support is to remove symptoms and stabilize the patient. So therefore, prevention is unimperative. And in 2006, WHO Strategic Advisory Group of Experts recommended vaccination in adverse countries. That vaccination is the single most important control Okay, so in 2015, in February, Kerala po, nag-release ang WHO ng updated recommendations kasi ngayon meron ng mga bagong pakuna. So Pilipinas merong isang WHO recognized na pakuna. Yun yung life attenuated recovery ng Japanese encephalitis. Dive siya. Pero actually, tatlo yan. So, meron itong isang to, which is primary, okay, which is life attenuated. It's required single dose for children 12 months of age and over, okay. Um, but I think um, for the for the benefits, the label is actually two doses one per apart. Iba kasi yung recommendation ng the WHO is a recommendation of the state in Society. Yes, society. So, this vaccine is licensed also in the US, in the Philippines, Australia, Malaysia, and Thailand. Now, the second is actually cheaper, at least in international ways. Um, if you procure the vaccine in international kung program, mas mura siya. Uh, this is still developed in China by the Chinese uh, Institute of Biological Products. This one is also given. Uh, single doses early as six months and has been used extensively in a lot of Asian countries in China and India and called South Korea as you know. Okay. Um, the reason why the previous vaccine was not is no longer recommended is the mouse inactivated, so the mouse brain inactivated one. You believe that because there are patients that are dying in China now. Korea, old version of the So, if you have patients who are coming from China or Czech, of course, what kind of vaccine they take? Okay. Uh, then the third is the inactivated Japanese encephalitis virus, which is not available in the Philippines. Okay. So, the second disease, the Meropa Corona, and the Inagami Pashado, I find for so typhoid is caused by salmonella and the bacterial typhoid or SIP. And this is spread by fecal oral food through contaminated food or water. It is estimated that there are 5 million people at risk, 12 million cases annually, and 129,000 deaths annually, particularly in areas with poor access to water. Um, recently, I read in the papers that the poor in the Philippines have very poor access to safe Okay. And and so the people who are at most at risk are actually the poor. And the Philippines is considered to have a high typhoid incidence, that means more than a hundred per hundred thousand. So you can see here and you see that one? The is in the red. Okay. So pinaka ko na naman yung data ng PISAR. If you are familiar with the Philippine Integrated Disease Surveillance and Response, it's a passive-based surveillance. So mayroon na lang kakawag or mayroon na mag-report na kanang nila i-report. So very, very underestimated yan. So in 2013, no 
also the people stay for the two rows and outbreaks here on my point. This is time for cultural cases and have been there in culture confirmed, not just respected. The fact that if you look at the data from Germany, um, 2012 and 2013, there were more than 30,000 suspected cases. Okay, probable, which was not very clinical, and there were clinical specific signs that's probable. So that's around um, 15, 10 to 15,000 cases. And confirmed, what is that? All the quality has been confirmed. The confirmed cases are around uh, 400 to 500 in 2010 and 2011. It got better. Surveillance got better in 2012. So, sorry, uh, let me just um, orient you. So, the left, uh, uh, y axis, the number of suspected and probable cases. And on the right, the secondary axis, the number of confirmed cases. And the confirmed cases are used at the same time. Okay? So, so, and the age with the highest risk is the 5 to 14 years old age group, which is the same in other countries in, in India, in Pakistan, in Bangladesh. Okay, so it's the same, same age group. And uh, again, the WHO recommends for dramatic use of vaccines in high endemic countries and for outbreak of war. The vaccine that's available in the countries right now is the VI polysaccharide vaccine, the single part of the dose, and of course, free vaccination. Um, PY, I'm not sure PY21A is available until now. There is now a contributed PI vaccine which will provide longer protection. Para is not a new hope of conjugate vaccine and thankfully conjugate vaccine. Conjugated to the Tetanus vaccine. It's only licensed in India and they're applying for um, international accreditation. Okay? Um, what you say, and I don't know what you so if you look at the areas in Vietnam that have been using the VI vaccine, the VI vaccine, the same one that's or similar one that's available in the Philippines. If you look, um, the nine years that I point into this, so as the coverage increases, you'll see that the incidents are going down as well. Okay. This is the selected high incidence districts in Vietnam. Okay. It's, it's, it's not nationwide, it's only selected districts. The same in China, this is data from Yilin and Guangxi provinces in China. And you'll see that the thyroid incidence was really high in 1995, and then when they started giving vaccines in a programmatic manner, when the coverage started going up, you will see that actually the incidence started going down as well. Okay? So this is just a real life experience in the vaccine. Okay, the second one, of course, uh, I've been working for Kona for the best past 10 years. Um, and, and so I, I want to give a brief information on uh, oral Kona vaccine. So WHO recently has started recommending the use of oral cholera vaccine as part of an integrated approach to cholera control with water sanitation and behavioral change. So although the Philippines here, this is our paper from then, although this is data from uh, 2000, uh, 6 to 2010, okay? Um, and you'll see that the Philippines is around uh, 1 per 1,000 on rate of cholera. And before you say that there's no more cholera in the Philippines, let me remind you there was a huge outbreak in people in 2012. Okay? And most of the children who got sick were the younger ones, and usually, but the younger ones was Marami, Pizza, Pizza, and Benita area. Okay, so we looked at the data from from this on the confirmed. So on your left, okay, on your left are the laboratory confirmed cases of cholera. On the right are confirmed and suspected cases. And you see, so ang sabi ng mga expert, uh, more than one for a thousand, uh, yung incidence, mataas na yun, and then you can add. And there are some areas in the Philippines that you see are really dark brown, it's particularly in Mindanao and Palawan. These sites have very high rates of cholera. And if you are targeting for, for cholera control, you might go directly. If you're a public health person and you want to identify the places at risk, you can use the map and then see whether if this place is um, part of my Okay, there are two cholera vaccines available in the market. I think the, the second one, Lumoral, is no longer available to do this. So, if I shampoo, it's available. 
So, and one of the most important things that has come out after the Haiti outbreak, so are you familiar with the Haiti outbreak that has started in 2010 after 100 years of no cholera? Um, and then the peacekeepers were said that they were the ones who brought cholera in Haiti. And, and so now more than 7,000 cases, I'm not sure how many the Haiti count, but, the, but uh, thousands or hundreds of them. Um, so, yeah, thousands of people and, and And so, WHO at the time did not really recommend using vaccines. Um, after one, because the outbreak has already begun, and they said that, you know, it's not going to work. But now, because of data from the Haitian outbreak, uh, they found that you can actually keep vaccines after the outbreak is started. And what is important is that, which I will describe later on, a herd protection protects communities, not just the individuals who were vaccinated. And I think this is the reason why vaccine has like a social responsibility aspect. Um, and, and I wanted to emphasize that one. Okay, so um, the last of the vaccines I will discuss is the uh, pneumococcal disease and childhood pneumococcal conjugate vaccine. So this slide is actually basically uh, summarizes what happens once you introduce new hope and conjugate vaccine into a community and you get high coverage. Okay, so if you, once the PCV7 was introduced in the United States, so we have to less than five years old now. So dapat, dapat, diba, dapat bababa lang sa less than five years old. Okay? So why? Why? And that's because of herd protection. So if you don't get it, you can pass it. That's really the bottom line of herd protection. Okay, the term herd protection means uh, you protect not only the individual but you also protect the community or even the household or whatever against the disease. So if this baby has the vaccine taking iba yung iba sa mga sa ibang bansa, kaya sa Pilipinas, di ba nag-aalaga ng mga anak nyo? Iba mga lolo-lola? Iba? Pero yaya. <laughs> Pero madalas na katamang lolas, lolas. Okay. So kapag napakunahan yung bata, eh di, hindi rin siya mag-upscale. Hindi niya mag-upscale lola. Okay. Pero, doon sa baba, hindi na makunahan ng bata. Okay, so this, this kid, ah, oops, sabi na. This kid, okay, the one in the bottom, didn't get the vaccine, so grandma got it. Okay, so that's the reason why the new local conjugate vaccination is really successful because of the herd prevention. Um, now, uh, I, I want to discuss briefly a new vaccine that is in the horizon. I'm not sure when it's going to be like that. Um, there is a Dengue vaccine that is almost ready for the market. I got this slide, and this slide is actually from several years ago, but this is the only one I can find the latest. So, yung phase, nakalagay dyan, yung CYPTDB, as a phase 3, eh, tapos na na labas na yung kanyang basically trial results, yung mga interim results niya. So, nag-apply na sila ng licensure sa Asia at sa Latin America. There are also other vaccines. So, yung taki, yung Denpa, lumipat na yan, mag-basically na siya. Uh, yung iba din, itong PBDD, Naval um, Medical Research Center, tapos na rin yan sa phase 2. Lumabas na rin yung result na yan. Okay? So, so, let's move the shot to the right. So, familiar naman kayo sa development. Pag nag-develop ng bakuna, may phase 1, may phase 2, may phase 3. So, phase 3 yung malapit na. May yan yung efficacy or effectiveness, uh, efficacy study, not uh, effectiveness, okay? So, this vaccine, the CYB, has this chimeric. So, um, the backbone is actually the a yellow fever vaccine, and then and then it has incorporated uh, the the um, antigens, the free membrane and envelope proteins of one of the four dengue serotypes. Okay, so it has all four dengue serotypes. 
So briefly, I want to show you the results that became available in 1 in 2014 and 1 in 2015. So, tipping na ko, sa Asia, 10,000 na yung subject. Sa South America, 20,000. Mas mas marami sa South America. Kasi mas mababang incidence sa South America kaysa sa Asia. Kaya dapat, para magkaroon ng power, mas madami ng kukuli ng subjects. And then, the disease is also different in Asia. In Asia, the disease is really more of the younger age group, whereas in South America, it's actually more of an adolescent uh, disease. And you see, because the younger age group uh, in Asia, so the net is positive, the slower baseline, uh, compared to South America. So the so below you will see the per protocol as a potential to take the efficacy. So um, what you find is that it's not as high as the results factor, it's a 90 percent. But if you think about it, a 50 percent or 60 percent vaccine efficacy for a vaccine for a disease that causes a lot of deaths and a lot of uh, morbidity, a 50 percent vaccine efficacy may be is something that actually we okay. um, The only problem is that when they started stop analyzing the data. Uh, the, you will see that the vaccine efficacy for zero type 2 is not statistically significant in the Asian study, but in the South American study, it's significant. But anyway, the most important thing is against dengue hemorrhagic fever and against severe disease. Okay, so you see against dengue hemorrhagic fever for three doses, 88.5% in Asia and all the same in South America, 90% efficacy. So what uh, what are the other things that we found? So vaccine efficacy was higher among older age groups, 74 percent in the 12 to 14 years old, versus 35 percent in the 55 years old. There was also an 85 percent reduction in severe disease. Now, because this is an efficacy trial, so it's very very ideal. We need to follow, it's also a good time to follow up these patients. And long-term follow-up will be necessary to document the duration of protection, identify possible safety concerns. Life insurance, as I said, is expected this year in Latin America and Asia. I don't know exactly which countries in will be the one to to license the vaccine. So, in fact, Mexico right now, even two years ago, they already made plans on what they will do, fund, uh, funded by the Pharmacy Foundation. Um, they have plans on how they're going to roll out a dengue vaccine. Uh, so, but they do So, and also so forth. They are higher than that. Um, I'm not sure what is the plan of the or age whether we're going to find uh, this vaccine in our vaccination program, but I'm sure there will be a plan for this vaccine in this vaccine crisis. Okay, so just to summarize. To maximize the potential of vaccines and vaccination, a global vaccine action plan for the decade of vaccines has been placed. So, pag nagtanong sa inyo, alam niyo na kung ano global vaccine action plan na. <laughs> At sa hanggang kaya na ng decade of vaccines, 2011 hanggang 2020, yes. Okay, the GVAP aims to diminish the inequities of the access to vaccines. So, vaccines should be made available to everyone. More vaccines are being developed, but has to be used particularly in areas where they are most needed. In the horizon, there is a much anticipated vaccine which will further contribute to the control of the delivery of infection. And I wanted to say that April 24 to 30 go on World Immunization Week. So, kung kayo po ay nasa gobyerno, I'm sure there are mga activities around the World Immunization. I got this from the WHO. Okay. So I have a vaccination is everyone's job, protect your community. And I want, before I leave, I want to say this. Immunization is and should be recognized as a core component of the human right to care and an individual community and government responsibility. Everybody's responsibility. With that, I thank you.